I got a bunch of comments on my dead indie games video due to the amount of traction it gained. These comments were recommendations for other dead indie games, so think of this as a sequel to that video. Since it is December, in the spirit of giving, it is now my turn to give a video based on your recommendations. If these games are garbage, it's basically your fault and I'm never doing this again. Aw, where's your Christmas spirit, Ethan? Whoa! Who are you? I'm Pelly the White Elephant. But you're pink. Well, White Elephant is symbolic for Christmas because White Elephant Gift Exchange, and also, I'm actually mixed race. Oh, well, how inclusive of the spirit of Christmas. I know, right? Anyways, there were five recommended games, right? I wonder what they are. Honestly, I'm not too optimistic, and I'm a little sleep deprived, so that makes sense why I'm talking to a stuffed elephant, right? Cheating Tom was made by Crazy Labs Games, and considering how they claim to be one of the world's leading mobile game developers, I am kind of surprised that they are an indie studio. This is another situation where it is on the Apple App Store, but not on the Android Store. Well, two to four are on the Apple Store. The first one has vanished, meaning the only way to play the first one is an APK file. I forgot to mention that I have used up to down before, but it was on Windows where I have active antivirus software and not on mobile. And this game is for mobile. In recent months, up to down has been found to be not the safest third party app downloading site thing, which means my hesitation to use it previously is now completely justified, despite what Reddit says. This is why there will always be risk with downloading from third-party sites. And I will never be 100% sound of mind to use this site, despite the fact that sometimes it is the only way that it has been digitally preserved. Thankfully, with sites like YouTube, gameplay is available to watch, but not play, meaning I cannot comment on the feel of the game. Cheating Tom 1 starts with an opening cutscene. Then we select one of two students. You can hold the cheat, which fills up the bar at the top of the screen, and that's really it. The only thing that changes are the amount of students, the teacher, and the background. Personally, this is a game that I'm not very impressed with at an initial glance. Any links relating to Tabtail have stopped working, meaning Tabtail either got bought out by Crazy Labs or they renamed themselves to Crazy Labs. So maybe the first game also got swept away with that old brand. I think what interests me more is the animated series. It is a YouTube kids series where the animation is at least more impressive than the game, and although it seems like a goofy school comedy, there seems to be something that is hiding beneath the surface. Something doesn't feel right. At least, that is what the trailer wants you to think. The opening to the first episode shows a combination of both 2D and 3D elements, which immediately changes my expectations of the show due to how the game was pretty lackluster. Turns out this scene was just his imagination and we are brought to the real world. The comedy occasionally lands in this episode due to juxtaposition and the character introduction graphics stand out. However, the trope of the main character being embarrassed by his mom was severely overdone. Episode two introduces us to Taffy, the third main character with a turnip fascination. They climb through vents to engage in their secret plan to get back at their teacher, found a secret lab full of turnips, so you know where the story is going. She essentially gets high off of the turnips, sees sentient turnips that encourage her gluttony, meanwhile Tom fails his mission, and Sven gets kidnapped by alien looking creatures. Episode 3 reveals that he is actually in the teacher's lounge, a reveal that I'm honestly quite disappointed by, because the series could have spun off into a sci-fi adventure. About a minute later, that is exactly what happens. The monster from the lab breaks out, and since it looks like a giant turnip, Taffy is mesmerized. Using the previously established anti-turnip inhaler, they assembled weapons based off of these devices, and I gotta say, this series took a turn I was not expecting, but I love it. Puppet War was made by Twindingo, and was available on Google Play and the App Store. Sadly, both versions have vanished. It was essentially an FPS game where you shoot puppets. Not really much else going on here as far as I can tell. We start by choosing an episode, game type, and difficulty. Then it plays a trailer-like opening to hype up the players, although this intro is just text on screen with zooming pictures in between. Once the game loads, we spawn as a janitor with a mop. Stars can be collected with each kill, and each kill increases the score. After each level, you can unlock new guns, perks, and survival maps, so there is a sense of progression. There's also a workshop you can visit to upgrade your weapons and perks. After seeing actual gameplay for this game, I think I understand the appeal, destruction, and progression. Honestly, if I saw this game as a kid, I would probably also find it fun to play. It's basically COD Zombies, but with puppets. 
Twindingo hasn't posted on Twitter or X since 2015. Barely any remains have been found of the company nowadays. All we know is that it was an original indie team of two brothers, Alan and Oren. Zombie Fish Tank was created by Chilingo. Reddit says that the company got shut down by EA, which implies that Chilingo was owned by EA at one point in time. Currently, Chilingo is on the Electronic Arts website. So I guess they bought the company, but then shut down Zombie Fish Tank specifically? Who's to say? According to their channel, the company was active about five years ago, and people are begging for Zombie Fish Tank to be brought back to life, which is honestly kind of ironic. This game opens with a cinematic that is quite long, but it immediately addresses the lore of Zombie Fish Tank. Here you play as a corpse that eats other fish. You can also unlock fish dishes, do combos, and use power-ups. Seems pretty simplistic overall. Peripatia is different from the rest for two reasons. The first is that it is not a mobile game. The second is that it is a game that technically doesn't fully exist quite yet, since it is only in the form of a demo. It was in fact a Next Fest demo and has mature themes. What are these themes? I don't know because it doesn't tell me. So if you don't like controversial or disturbing games, I guess maybe skip this one. Although after playing it, I didn't really run into any of these situations. My immediate inclination was to go to the tutorial, but it might be more fun to go in blind. The loading screen is a belt. I think? After this we spawn in what looks to be a broken down warehouse. Loud buzzing irritates the decimated room as a cassette, cassette player, and book lay on the wooden table. And even after playing some of the game, I still don't know how to put the cassette in the cassette tape, so maybe I needed the tutorial after all. We can pick up the cassette and player, but when we look at the book, it shifts to looking at it from a digital view. It's a note from Philmon, stating how there's been 21 new materials found, that augments exist, and that whoever wrote this had some trouble with extracting certain parts. Immediately after this, I realized that this game is a first-person game, a third-person game, and a top-down action game. The character's eyes look sunken as if they've barely gotten any sleep. They stand in an awkward, almost unhuman position. After climbing a ladder, we discover that moving crates is an option that the HUD has both a light and sound meter, and we find the person who wrote the note, a Junker. We were supposed to be dead, this Junker paid a heavy price for us, and this is in fact a multiple choice adventure. Sure enough, it is revealed that we are in fact a cyborg. Apparently there are rules and regulations to scrapping, meaning live beings cannot be scrapped, so we are free to go. If we can help the Junker grab a specific bulb in exchange for a train ticket and a name. Now we get to choose an upgrade. We can choose to not be seen, possession, or time dilation. I chose possession since that might help best with this mission. Next, we pick up a weapon. I chose a Makarov. The overlay to equip our augs is a robotic addition that I gotta say, I love the attention to detail on. All we have to do is drag our aug onto the appropriate space. So far, we already have three augs. First is night vision, second is a speed boost, third is a puppeteer. After we parkour onto the rooftops, as recommended by the Junker, we got a sword from a corpse and found several different machines, including a vending machine and an arcade cabinet that I don't think we can play. I killed the gardener. I'm not sure if I was supposed to do that or not, but he didn't put up a fight at all. So my first combat encounter was not even supposed to be a combat encounter. Finding the light bulb was pretty challenging. It felt like I was wandering around aimlessly and accidentally killed my only chance at a hint. I'm starting to think this is one of those immersive sims where you can play it however you want because I keep killing people I'm not really supposed to but keep getting rewarded for it. Instead of focusing on the main mission, I decided to just roam around and man, this game lets you do exactly that. For instance, I talked to this guard because I wanted to get in and now I have to plant an explosive in someone's desk to enter. Or do I? This last one is called Wolf Water. This game is dead since it is no longer receiving updates. Instead, it is being morphed into a novel of some kind. What was interesting about this game is that when you download it, it's an HTML file. This is due to the fact that it is a text adventure game with multiple health bars, stats, and relationships. The intro of this game reads like a D&D campaign by using extremely detailed and vivid imagery. We have 8 save slots, our stats are at 0, and we are friends with Drew, whoever they are. We have multiple choices in the game. 
The first choice is gender, the second is eye color, third is hair, fourth is the length of the hair. This immediately puts a face to your character. After this, various choices like this pop up to personalize your backstory in a natural progression. It's not just the intro, the rest of the story also uses vivid imagery to bring these words to life. Eventually, you have the choice to finally type a name. Honestly, I thought it was just going to be choices, but seeing this option makes me even more optimistic so I put in my name. I read it for about 30 minutes and realized a few things. It could definitely sway towards being a rom-com even though the story choice is up to the reader. For a game that touts itself as a psychological thriller, that was not the vibe I got with the choices I made. So yeah, all in all, your recommendations were actually pretty good, despite the fact that I couldn't play most of them. If you're still curious as to the demise of these dead games, one of the reasons for some of these games getting removed might actually be due to the method of the pinned comment in the previous video. As in any developer, the restrictions on Google Play are actually ridiculous. You have to fill out long forms on a monthly basis explaining minute details that obviously don't apply to your game. And the other day, I got an email from Google the other day telling me that if I didn't update or publish a app, my account would be deleted in a week due to inactivity. This is a paid account I log into regularly, by the way, and the games I've published work fine, but if you go more than a year between releases, they just kill your account, I guess. It's really clear the kind of apps Google wants on their store, and it's not indie.